Hello, hello, hello. I got my self-made cream. This is a different container. I had this cream before. That's very nice, by the way. But it has, I had used it many years ago. Used it all and then I have been using this great container to make my own skin creams with and I made my own skin cream and I made this with coconut oil and carrier oil and cedar oil. It's very nice. It's as nice as this. It feels so good out here in the garden. So I want to do a foot and leg massage with that. And it melts on the hand. As you can see melts as soon as it gets warm it melts because that's what coconut oil does it feels real good real real good Smells good, really, really heavenly, heavenly. People are listening to their radio stations, which is almost never what I would listen to. <laughs> Nobody here, I don't, I don't. No one listens to classical music. Oh man, if they would play Mozart or Chopin or Beethoven and Bach and Rachmaninoff. And Shostak coverage. <laughs> that would be good. But no, no. It's some country pop <laughs> from the 60s or 70s. <laughs> but luckily, it's quite far in the distance. So. <laughs> It's not too bad. <laughs> I like the song of nature, the song of the birds. That's what I like. That is the, the absolute best. We don't need to have a radio bedazzling our nervous system nonstop. Okay, it's not necessary. Or, you know, everybody here in this neighborhood, they use everything. Everything has an engine that is fueled by gasoline, like lawnmowers, everything. And then when you talk to them about electric, they don't want to hear about it. They want to pollute the air. They want to create loud industrial noises that sound angry and macho that's why <laughs> that's why they do it 
they identify themselves with their lawnmowers. That's what's happening. Yeah, and everything could be electric. So, like everything can be electric. The lawnmower, Paul uses an electric lawnmower that has big batteries in it that they, they get charged, you know, and they charge up for a couple of hours, you know, then he can use the lawnmower for an hour or something. And it's relatively quiet. Every garden tool that's electric that Paul has is chargeable and electric and doesn't make so much noise, doesn't pollute. He doesn't have anything where you put gasoline into it, except for the van and but that had to, that's because we had no other choice. They didn't have those vans in electric. So, and we needed a van for Kenny, a former dog, former Great Dane. Kenny outgrew the Prius. We had a Prius before. He literally outgrew the Prius and would just wouldn't fit into the Prius anymore. So that's so then I ended up with Kenny staying in this place in this house in this garden for one year straight without ever leaving the property that was long before the pandemic and I did that for Kenny because he wouldn't fit into the Prius anymore and Paul wasn't ready to buy the van yet or was still researching vans and stuff like that it took him a long time so we patiently waited here at home <laughs> <laughs> my dog comes first okay before anything else my dog is my priority my dog is my life. My dog is my everything. My dog is my child of choice. Okay, that's the truth. And it is good. It's wonderful. It's wonderful here, really, really wonderful. Really enjoy this garden so much. I'm going to miss this garden and also the other garden, both houses. I'm going to miss both of them. But we have to put them on the market before the real estate prices fall. I'm gonna have to brain cleanse my brain later and my entire body and energy field later <laughs> with Mozart's Requiem and Grand Mass. After hearing glimpses of the of the eighties poop music. <laughs> I have to cleanse my auric field.
physical touch is infinitely important for all mammals and birds too and even other animal type of species. I picked up a banana slug the other day and and the banana slugs they like to be picked up by me because because I touch them with love and gentleness and they can feel it. Even insects, even invertebrates can feel this, can feel the love. And I petted the banana slug gently and he seemed to like it because he did not withdraw the tentacles. The tentacles, two tentacles stayed out the, that they explore things with. And it's really lovely. And then I saw another banana slug today when I got up. The banana slug was attached <laughs> to the outside of one of our trash cans that we have the compost in. One of the composting bins. We have the large the large trash cans out there. We have about 10 of those out there that we use for compost. You have to put holes into those, drill holes into them on the side, on the top, on the bottom so that scavenger insects can get in and also earthworms can get in from underneath. And so once you turn over the, the trash can and you empty it out you know, after it has been sitting for a while, you see a whole lot of reddish or red earthworms, very large, sometimes pink earthworms that are very, very large. They're like as thick as my little finger and like long like this. And they're in, in the compost and they are decomposing all the stuff. So they are they're the main recycling unit to recycle bio waste into black, good smelling, healthy smelling earth soil. And that's wonderful. And that's how it, it should be done. Okay, that's how we should be living. That's how everyone should be living. So I saw banana slug. That was a different banana slug this time because this one didn't have as many brown spots on him. That one was a little bit younger. And I thought, we have to make a video with that banana slug. So I told Paul all about it. He got the camera ready and we went out there and I looked. And lo and behold, the banana slug was gone. <laughs> because... I just dabbled along for too long. I was doing other things and by the time I got back to the banana slug, the banana slug had left. <laughs> I had the feeling that that was going to happen. And then I couldn't find the banana slug. I saw a slime trail going underneath the brush, but the, the brush has ivy underneath and growing on the, on the ground. and and I couldn't see anything, so I didn't know. I couldn't see the banana slug under all that ivy. And I thought, okay, well then he just wants to be left alone. It's better to let him go his ways. <laughs> it's a little bit like us driving on a freeway for three hours. If you look at us driving on a freeway for three hours from the airplane perspective or let's say from the satellite perspective, then you see our van s driving very slowly, very, very slowly from A to B. And that's how it is with the banana slugs. But they will get from A to B eventually. <laughs> so 
it just takes them a longer time. That's all it is. I hear people say, time is money. What a ridiculous thing to say. <laughs> or time is of the essence. The realtors would say that. Time is of the essence. How can we do business if you don't come into our office? Time is of the essence. <laughs> well, you have not met <laughs> slow paced natural people before <laughs> that do everything slow motion with earth clays in nature. And the other lady said, you are on our property now. How did we know? We didn't know, right? We just mosey along through the property that's for sale. And if there are no boundaries, how do we know that there is a boundaries? That's why it is so important that we stack up literally our boundaries physically and emotionally very important to do here are my boundaries okay stay out private property <laughs> but some people don't do that because they don't want to spend the money on posts or something. Well, then they shouldn't be complaining, right? Wonderful. Nice and warm. I love it. It's gonna get too hot now for the desert, so we're not gonna go into the desert. I wanted to go back into the desert. There's a property for sale. We, we, we have to still see that property. But it's gonna get too hot there now. I mean, just driving over there through the, through the lower region, it's gonna, get, it's gonna get over 100 degrees in the lower regions. That's going to be unbearable. No, we can't do that. So we have to stay in the coastal region. And we're going to go up north. I'm not going to say where on the internet, of course. <laughs> I wish I could. I just wished I could. I wished we could leave our doors unlocked at night. And I wish we didn't have to have a high security system with surveillance cameras and all of that. I wished we didn't have to be <laughs> mentally ill and totally paranoid. I wished. But unfortunately, the world is full of different people with different mental illnesses and a large number of people have cluster B mental illnesses and that's why we have to <laughs> have high security systems. Okay, that's that's why. You know. Then they get they complain and they say, You don't trust us? Well <laughs> think about this for a moment. Why do we not trust you? Because they go into pe they break into people's homes. I don't want to have to mention Richard Ramirez. But the thing is this, in psychology, they become like this because they feel not trusted in the first place. That doesn't, that's not an excuse for them to do what they're doing. It's not even a real good explanation of anything. But it is a very valid causality. But that has to do with their childhood trauma, okay? And then they project this on rich people or certain communities and so on. 
and they feel excluded and they feel not trusted or they feel stepped on by the government and they feel stepped on by people and they feel they feel shunned by society society they shun every everyone who is not who is someone that they don't trust or who is who lives differently or who is not like them or that's what people do they do this in any society any society of any color of any religion will do that with the other okay that's how humans are that's tribalism it's mental illness okay. that in turn has the result of division and then causing people trauma again and that causes more distrust and it is a, it's it's a never-ending mental illness cycle that's going on okay and and I want to dissolve that mental illness cycle that is my goal. That is absolutely my goal to do. With my videos, with my conversations with people, with whatever I write, any commentary, any comment, any article I write, any book I write, I want to bring this up, I want to discuss this subject. Jiddu Krishnamurti and Dr. David Bohm have been talking about these themes for like 50 years. And it's amazing. And we need to continue these discussions. Very, very important. And the discussions, they, they can be containing other people's thoughts or whatever people want to contribute. It could be something people have been brainwashed with. Bring it to the table in a friendly way, you know. Let's talk about it. But people don't want to do that, you know. As soon as I meet a fundamentalist, like the other day, a fundamentalist came to my channel and asked me what I'm gonna do if I don't believe in Jesus, then Am I not afraid that I might go to hell if I don't believe in Jesus? So I said a bunch of things to him. I said that love comes before religion and all of this. this I said good stuff. <laughs> and then he said, I better go now. Because he didn't have anything to... He was just resistant. He was in resistance. He wasn't listening to what I said. And he didn't have an argument against what I said. So then he said he, he has to go. I want people to stay and to get involved in conversations, you know. We need to get into deep conversations about all of this. You can bring up your religion. Let's talk about about your religion. Okay, let's talk about it. It's a pathology. <laughs> yeah, I'm not laughing about it, but we need to make this very clear. Religion is mental illness. I talk about my OCD. You know, we can talk about OCD and religion and and, and cluster B and all of these things. Let's talk about it. Let's bring this to the to our consciousness so that we can actually we can become consciously aware of our own act thoughts with the religion and all of that stuff uh, and then you know then you can get into your own psychology do the inwardness meditation process so and that's the healing path that's where we need to go. All of us. Every single one. The Pope too. Every single one of us. The CEO of ExxonMobil too. 
so <laughs> everyone sorry you know you have to you have no other choice so okay so maybe I'll make another video later you guys take care bye bye <laughs>